Today, I'm going to show you how to resurrect cells from long-term storage. Here we have 70% ethanol in a spray bottle. This is pretty commonly used to decontaminate all of our work surfaces and our tools and our hands. And we're working in a laminar flow hood to prevent anything from falling into our cultures and our petri dishes. There's a few ways to store cells for long periods of time, and I'll show you how to resurrect all of them in today's video. This first one is a lyophilized uh, cell pellet in a glass ampule, and these will survive basically indefinitely at room temperature. Lyophilized is the same thing as freeze-dried. I've just got a heavy object, and I'm just going to smash the glass ampule. There are, uh, you know, more civilized ways of doing this, but this has worked great for me for a long time now. So I just broke that glass ampule, and for all of these samples, I'll also be resuspending them in YPD li liquid culture because most of these are yeast samples that I'm working with. YPD is a pretty generic media for yeast. You can check out my channel if you need to know how to make that, um, but I'm just putting it in these sterile culture tubes and if the streak plates don't end up working out, I'll have these in the fridge to go back to later. And out of the 31 samples that I streaked, only two of them had any issue. Um, and I'm gonna blame the culture collection on that one. So you can see it was resuspended nicely. Next, we're gonna look at uh, what's called a glycerol stock. I'm pretty sure that's on my channel as well, on how to make these. This is typically something like 20% to 60% glycerol, the rest being cell culture, and you need to store these at minus 80 Celsius. So they store for a very long time as well, but you need a minus 80 freezer that never breaks down on you in order to preserve the cultures. In this case, I'm just taking a volume of this glycerol stock, something like 50 to 100 microliters, and resuspending it directly in that YPD liquid culture uh, just to make sure for certain that we get some cells in there. Because sometimes these culture collections, you know, they've been sitting around for a while or an intern made the culture or something like that and, and they may not be viable. In this case, it was a filamentous fungi and so you can see the bits floating around. And then finally, the last format you'll see is what's called a slant culture. So this is actually agar in here, and the cells are sitting on top of the agar like a petri dish. So this is something that needs to be made fresh. This isn't a long-term storage solution, but this is how it was sent to me, how the strain was sent to me. In this case, to ensure that I get enough cells off of the surface of the agar, I'm actually adding the YPD liquid to the slant culture to resuspend uh, the cells on the surface of the agar here. I could theoretically, same thing with the glycerol stock, I could theoretically just put a swab or um, a pipette tip in there and swab it around and then swab that on the petri dish, but I just want to be certain that I'm going to get cells on the petri dish. And again, 29 out of the 31 samples that I took grew, and on the second attempt, the 30th one grew, and then the 31st one I think it's the fault of the culture collection, or maybe I just have bad hands. So I uh, put liquid into the slant culture, took the liquid back out, and then put it in the YPD liquid culture. And so now in all of these liquid culture tubes, we know these have not grown for any amount of time. I just put the, the cells in there and we're going to use those cells or use that liquid culture, hopefully with the cells, to make our streak plates. It's important when you're resurrecting these cells that you make streak plates, you isolate an individual colony, and then you regrow that individual colony to make your new glycerol stock or lyophilized freeze stock. Um, and that's to make sure that your genetic background is consistent. So I'm taking 10 microliters of the culture just to be certain that we're getting some cells and putting it directly on the petri dish. These YPD Petri dishes are mostly dry, and so when I put 10 microliters on and rub it around with a new pipette tip, it's going to absorb into the agar and dry out. And that is really important, no matter what you're plating, that when you plate your cells, the Petri dish should be dry when you're done. So I smeared it around, got a clean pipette tip, drug through the previous streak, and then struck around, and then I'm going to drag through with a new clean tip, into those set of streaks and then streak that around. This will guarantee that you get beautiful individual colonies. 
I also have a short on streak plates. Be sure to store these Petri dishes agar side up so that condensation doesn't ruin your plate. Thanks for watching.